discuss in the RAD grid view and how you can export the data that's stored inside of that to Excel. Um, there's actually two ways to accomplish that task. Uh, first, you can use the primary interop assemblies, so you can directly interact with Excel. Um, I'm actually going to be discussing the alternate method, which is using Excel ML format. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, we're going to drag and drop the RAD grid view on the form. Uh, I'll discuss a little bit more about the Excel ML format here in a minute and show you some of that. But first, let's get some data in our grid. I'm going to start off, uh, we're just going to use some link to SQL. And uh, we'll call that sample data. Add that to our project. And we'll pull over the orders table from the Northwind database. There we are. All right, so now we've got our data grid on the form. We just need to load it up. So we're going to say using var db data equals a new sample data context. There we go. And we'll come over here and we'll set up the RAD grid views data source property to be equal to a link expression here uh, from O in DB data dot orders, the orders table. We want to select all the orders. So now we are loading all the orders into the RAD grid view. And uh, let me change one more thing. Set this form. We want it to be starting up in the center of the screen. And let's run that. And there you have it. Um, all of our columns and rows from the orders table are nicely displayed in our form. Okay, but we want to get that data into Excel. And how are we going to accomplish that? Well, first, we need to put a reference in here. We want to say using statement for telerik.windcontrols.ui.export. We need this because this is what houses our export functionality. And uh, we've got that now set up in here. Next, let's come over to the uh, UI and we want to add a red button right there. And we will call that red button in the properties over for you to see a little bit. We will call that red button export to Excel. Another thing we'll do is come down here, change the text to Excel. Let me spell it correctly. Got a little ahead of myself. Okay, so we want to go to an event handler for that click event. And let me scroll this back a little bit for our, and our space. There we go. Uh, now we want to say far Excel ML, and we want to say new export to Excel ML. And this is the uh, object that you're going to be utilizing to get your data into Excel. We're going to say Excel ML dot run export. And it's pretty plain and simple what we're doing here. We're going to pass in our red grid view. We're going to give it a file name. I'm going to give it a path on my box. Uh, And we also need to set the max rows. So the max rows differentiates whether it's an Excel 2007 file, which is currently displayed the maximum number of rows that it can have, versus any uh, Excel version prior to that. So uh, 65,536 was the limitation. Now, just so you know, the Excel ML format will work with any uh, Excel version 2002 or newer. <clears throat> if, otherwise, you would need to go to the uh, primary uh, interop app. Now, we're going to uh, say that we don't want visual settings to go out. Let me say false. Say what I mean. And uh, that's it. So we've got our path. And uh, now we should be able to run. And we have our event handler that's going to uh, execute when we click the button. Okay, so now we have our data and we're going to click that Excel button. And let me bring up my documents folder, and there we go. Sample XML is now there. Now notice it says XML, but it says it's an Excel format. So let's first look at this inside of Notepad. I want to show you exactly what this uh, Excel ML format looks like. Turn Word Wrap off. It can get very nasty. Okay, so uh, you'll see that there's several different... Uh, settings that are custom for Excel that are identifying this as an Excel file. Um, it also will have 
the columns laid out for you, uh, the data, what the data types are, um, number, string, and so forth. So this is really a true XML representation of a workbook. And it tells you everything you need to know. You can have multiple workbooks, multiple, multiple uh, worksheets, uh, that is, and uh, so forth. But that's what the XML looks like. And now we can open that up in Excel, and it's going to look exactly the way it should with all of our column headers here, all of our rows neatly identified underneath, and so forth. So that's a quick and easy way to get your data out into Excel. There's a, one more nice thing that you can do, and that is you want to make your grid look a little nicer here. Let's come over to our form load event, and I want to change that. I want to say red grid view dot enable alternating row color equal true. And now when we run this app, we're going to have a nice uh, alternating row colors on all of our rows. It'll look really good. It'll be blue. And here we are. We'll see that this is a very nice presentation. It's going to be a lot more what you're probably going to have in your application with a, a nice clean look and feel. Uh, we can also have that ex export out, but we can't do it with what I've currently got. So in order to uh, show that, we just need to come over and change our uh, last property equal to true. And that is going to export the visual settings for the spreadsheet as well. Okay, so let me uh, click the button. We've got our, our alternating rows here. And bring up that, that uh, again. Here we are. And let's open up the sample XML now. And we will have all of our alternating row colors exported along with our Excel data. So this makes it a lot nicer. It actually looks a lot more like what the application looks like. Um, and therefore, the familiarity for the user will be there. OK, so one last thing I wanted to show very quickly. Uh, other than the setting for this, which is Excel 2007, so this is current. I can change that to Excel 2007. And that simply increases the max number of rows. So that's not a big deal. Um, however, you might be tempted to change this to XLS format so people know that it's an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you can do this. It doesn't change the behavior of the Excel ML that's exported. However, it will give your user something uh, that they have to click through. So let me demonstrate that very quickly. It's just a quick gotcha uh, to be aware of. So let me click the export button. And here we are, now we have our XLS. And when I bring up the Excel this time, it's actually gonna have an error that shows uh, it's the wrong format. And it is the wrong format because we're actually dealing again with XML, not with the traditional binary XLS format. So if you click yes, it will display the information appropriately, but I would recommend that you stick with the XML format or extension that is, so that the user will know uh, that what it is and it, and it opens up in Excel anyway and it actually identifies it correctly because of the uh, information stored with that. So uh, there you go that's how you can export your data very quickly with the red grid view using Excel and I hope this is useful to you.